This is CS2510, week 2, lecture 1. So today we're going to start iterations in MATLAB, of course. And so basically today we will go over loop constructs in MATLAB. But before we get started, a couple of points, so notes. Number one, so starting this week, I mean, last week was actually really easy stuff. We just went over basic MATLAB, conditionals, and, and conditionals. So starting this week, we are uh, going to start writing quote unquote real MATLAB code. Hence, I will expect you to do the assigned reading. If you don't, you'll find the going pretty difficult. I will highlight, so a second, so what I'll do in lecture is I'll highlight learning objectives whoops I can't really. I'll highlight learning objectives and then illustrate the ideas Uh, with examples plus put uh, some end of section problems okay but again bottom line let me put this in red I'm gonna say this like hopefully only once I don't want to keep repeating this bottom line please practice okay uh, so because I'll use new so I will introduce, obviously we cannot cover every fun new function in MATLAB, but I will introduce new functions uh, in MATLAB every class, okay? So you must practice to be to practice enough so you become to become comfortable with MATLAB syntax. Okay, so let's get started. So for this lecture, the learning objectives are, number one, concepts. And I don't do this for all my classes. I'm specifically doing this for this class because the way we are approaching this class is very unique in the sense of the Cornell way of uh, highlighting concepts using mathematics. And we kind of have to do that because like, we're using MATLAB. right? It's, MATLAB is a mathematical simulation tool. It's not like like Java. So let's say I was teaching object-oriented programming using Java, I would approach this course differently. Of course, I would be talking about uh, data structures most of the time and how do you specify them using OOP. Anyway, getting back, what are the concepts that we are going to learn is iteration, termination criteria, uh, top-down development, uh, sequence, summation and then approximations number one number two the language features for loop a construct to repeatedly 
execute statements. Uh, repetition. Let me save this or I'll lose this. Is controlled by setting the loop index value index val value so the syntax is going to be for loop index value and it's usually the loop index values are of the type start increment stop okay so repeat these statements and then end and the while loop is the other kind of loop in matlab is it's a construct to repeatedly execute statements repetition controlled by by setting the termination criterion okay. it has the form while termination so slightly different but the idea is the same that is you repeat a bunch of statements while termination criterion not met okay you repeat these statements end okay now sometimes I'll give you general notes so for this uh, general note is you gotta remember that MATLAB is a mathematical simulation whatever that means that's why I put it in quotes uh, language that manipulates matrices okay that's why MATLAB is an acronym for matrix laboratory matrix laboratory Hence, one can use matrix manipulation techniques, this is the general note actually, the crux of the general note, instead of loops, okay, and MATLAB is usually more efficient the code it generates and executes when using matrix manipulation and using matrix manipulation techniques however we still require an understanding let me save this so it doesn't crash okay, an understanding of loops since we can combine obviously loops and matrix manipulation okay. 
We really won't do that much matrix manipulation to start out with, but we will eventually get it, use it very commonly. And so let's now get into MATLAB and um, do some examples of loops. Okay. Now, what I'll do is mo usually most lecture will be like this. This is now 10 minutes. So half the lecture, I'll do some writing. On the other half, we'll do MATLAB. Okay, let me pause the lecture and then fire up MATLAB and we can get started. Because MATLAB takes some time to start on my tablet. I don't want to waste recording time. All right, I'm going to pause the lecture now. OK, continuing. So let's look at some examples. And let's start out with something very simple. That is, for a for loop, let's just do a simple for loop. So for k equals 1 to 10, and notice here I haven't specified the increment. If I don't, the default increment is 1. So for k 1 to 10, I'm going to use a function called disp k to echo this. So if I do end, so basically I just display numbers 1 to 10. Okay. Now usually if we just type k 1 to 10, what I get, let me call this, I don't know, m 1 to 10. Notice I actually get a matrix, one row and uh, 10 columns. Okay. But as here, we, the loop index is just a one by one matrix. However, MATLAB is pretty robust in the sense, let's try this, okay. For k equals one, but inc increment by negative two, that is decrement, go to negative 10. So we gotta make sure we don't have infinite loops. I'll show, we'll do an example of an infinite loop uh, when we do while. So disp k, and obviously you're gonna start at one, okay. You're gonna decrement by negative two. So the entries are gonna be one um, minus one negative 3, negative 5, negative 7, negative 9, okay? So there it is. And of course, as we were doing last week, you need to make sure you have an idea of what your code is going to generate before you actually write the code. So now let's look at uh, more exciting examples to do some fun stuff. So let's say V is a matrix one, our friend here, okay? Whoops. And you can see I made a, well, Made a mistake, so I get an empty matrix because obviously this condition is not satisfied. So it's good I did this. Let's fix this. There you go. Okay. Now, how do you access elements in a matrix? Well, you have to understand that MATLAB array indices very important. Okay. Uh, MATLAB array oops, indices start at one, not zero. Okay. So V of one is 1. Okay, if I do v of 0, I want to get index out of bounds. Okay, let's use that error. Let's use the command length. So this should be 6 there. Okay. Now let's do, Mat MATLAB is very powerful in the sense. What is this? Okay. So I claim that, uh, so let's see, 1, 2, 5, produces the matrix one, start at one, increment by two, okay, three and five. So basically, you're asking what is, so let's do this, this is wrong, this is right, okay. So V of one, let's see, is going to be a matrix one, the third element is going to be negative three, it's going to be negative seven, so let's check, and there it is, okay? So that's cool. Let's do a more complicated example in the sense, let me go into V2 examples. And let me do a script. Oh, God. I can just do a control N. So let's say my, no, my not complicated is the wrong word. It's a complicated example, more exciting example. So this is uh, one row, four column matrix. So for k, one goes to length of v, okay? v of k is v of v of k minus one. Again, on the exam, I will not, there is no MATLAB, there are no, you're not allowed to use MATLAB, no cheat sheets. I don't really understand the syntax, it's not that hard. Let's do this. So the solution is going to be, so let's see, let me save this um, for loop example dot m, okay. 
so k is going to be 1 1 1 2 3 4 okay so it's going to go to 4 so loop iteration 1 is going to be v of 1 is going to be v of v of 1 minus 1 okay this implies v of 1 will become what is v of v of 1 4 uh, 4 minus 1 is 3 this implies v of 1 is going to become 3 okay therefore v is going to become again this is a script not a function so then uh, uh, thus v will become so the workspace variable is modified is what I'm trying to say 3 2 3 5 okay and then in loop iteration 2 you're going to get v of 2 is v of v of 2 minus 1 this implies v of 2 is what one v of 1 now correct but then since v of 1 got modified this implies that v of 2 is also 3 thus we're going to get v will become 3 3 3 5 okay then loop iteration 3 is v of 3 will become v of uh, v of 3 minus 1 this imp oh god this implies v of 3 is going to become v of v of 3 1 2 3 v of 2 which implies v of 3 is also 3 thus v is uh, still 3 3 3 5 and then finally loop iteration 4 v of 4 is going to be v of v of 4 minus 1 which implies v of 4 is going to be v of 4 1 2 3 4 5 minus 1 is 4 v of 4 this implies that v oops yeah that's right v of 4 is v of 4 v of 4 is 5 uh, hence v will be and then let me just this v okay. hence output now uh, let's not do this v uh, yeah let's just do v let's show it okay this output will become um, 3335 it's this we gotta include the new line etc so let's just check this Then well, you can see, and um, I haven't put a semicolon, so let's put a semicolon. But this is good that you can see, like you can even check your loop iteration, right? So let me just copy this. Then three 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 five is exactly what we predicted. Good. So now let's do a final example. Of the while loop so let's make an error that is while n is not equal to length of v okay n equals n plus 1 but n is undefined so you're gonna get undefined variable n let's just make n equals 0 and then let's do the same thing while n is not equal to length of v n equals n plus 1 and uh, let's see I should not have put the semicolon n equals n plus 1 end uh, okay err so n equals 0 let's start again I have, I have to reinitialize the loop variable length of v n equals n plus 1 end okay so I start with 0 go 1 2 3 4 till I hit 4 because 4 is the length of v the loop quits very simple now what we got to be careful of let me just turn on more functionality and this is the last thing we'll do infinite loops okay well n is not so let's reinitialize n equals 0 okay while n is not equal to length of v but let's say n equals n plus 3 all right the loop is never going to end in the sense so you can see the termination condition is not satisfied so one of the reasons why if you think about it this not equal you got to be very careful of using as a loop condition especially when the right hand side is not an integer um, 
let's say you're comparing something to pi, and pi is basically an uh, approximation, since so it's an irrational number, it's an approximation of the computer, you want to, if whenever you uh, compare, whenever you, bottom line, this is the rule of thumb, whenever you utilize loop termination conditions, you want to make sure and understand the idea, you want to make sure the loop actually terminates by understanding what's going on. Okay. So anyway, that's about it for today's lecture. Next time we'll do more examples of loops by doing a couple of end of the section problems. All right, see you then.